let us get into the coronavirus now. Uh, Moderna has laid out a potential timeline when it comes to key milestones in its COVID-19 vaccine development. The company CEO says interim results are expected next month from a large clinical trial. And if they're positive, the federal government could authorize emergency use by the end of the year. So for more on this, let us bring in Dr. Nita Ogden. She's an internal medicine specialist and immunologist. So first off, I'll ask you about, you know, the timeline that we're hearing from Moderna. Does it sound like something that's doable? I can't remember if Moderna was one of the um, one of the companies that had to halt their their testing for a bit or not. But what do you make of the timeline? So good morning, and I think, well, no, Moderna is not one of the companies that had to halt their trials. That's AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, and those trials in the United States are still on pause because of uh, people who developed illnesses. I think Moderna is being uh, very transparent, and I think this is uh, an expected timeline uh, from their you know, phase three trial that started this summer. Uh, they're close to uh, completing enrollment of 30,000 participants, which is quite significant. And they're basically saying that when they do their first interim analysis in November, if they get positive results, which essentially means if 53 people uh, develop COVID-19 in the non-treatment arm and we see the vaccinated arm doing better than that, uh, then they will move ahead with seeking uh, emergency use authorization probably in December. Uh, but they're very, like I said, transparent that if those results, those positive results don't pan out, if they don't have even one piece, you know, in place to lead to these successful results, uh, then they're not going to obviously be able to move ahead with that. And they'll have to do a second interim analysis in December uh, of a larger group of people. And that would delay an emergency use authorization until probably the early New Year. So I think they're being um, honest and transparent. And this actually sounds like, yes, it's a quick timeline. We're all aware of how uh, quickly all of these vaccines are being developed. But with regard to how Moderna is approaching it, uh, I think this actually makes sense. Uh, Dr. Ogden, as you know, Friday was the deadline for states to submit their plans to the CDC for a coronavirus vaccine distribution. But many state officials say they still have no idea how they're going to financially carry them out. How effective is the vaccine if it's gradually rolled out? And uh, are there concerns of the vaccine being rolled out inconsistently? Yes, absolutely. And I think that raises this point that we continue to hear that it's one thing to have a vaccine and it's another thing to have a vaccine that people actually take uh, or are able to take. Access is a very big piece of this puzzle. And we see billions of dollars going into the development of vaccines. Well, what about helping these states figure out the logistics and actually afford uh, the not just scaling up, but distribution of the vaccine to all the right people that are laid out uh, in the guidelines, the stepwise guidelines? guidelines of the CDC. So we had we encountered this problem with PPE and with testing and the in the absence of a sort of federal mandate, um, you know, like the Defense Production Act, where the, the government really gets behind helping states to distribute the vaccine and with public health education, because we still continue to see people be wary of the vaccine. Um, I think it's going to be difficult. So in the meantime, we don't have a vaccine now, and what we're seeing across the country are cases soaring. I don't know how viruses work, how they mutate. We learned that there were, you know, a few different versions of COVID-19 kind of around the globe. Could a surge like what we're seeing here in the U.S. have an impact on how the virus mutates? No, certainly we actually might even think that the surge is due to a mutation, but we do know that uh, mm. the coronavirus can mutate. It's an mRNA vaccine. RNA vaccines uh, tend to mutate very easily. They just don't replicate and edit um, correctly. And the, the what remains to be seen is what is the consequence of those mutations? Do they really have any clinical significance? We saw a significant mutation in the spike protein, which we know is that essential piece of the virus that it uses to enter human cells in Europe this summer. And what 
it's likely to have done is to have increased transmissibility, but not necessarily uh, severity of disease leading to greater deaths. So to be honest, this is still kind of an issue that's a gray area and can only make us buckle down more with those efforts of social distancing, hand washing, and wearing masks, because uh, the virus is certainly sneaky. And as it becomes more transmissible, it's actually more likely to be spread from one person to another, even, you know, possibly if you're wearing masks. So it's taking those many layers of protection while we figure out what exactly is going on and if it is mutating. Doctor, the surge of COVID-19 cases across rural America is putting a massive strain on small town hospitals. How are they coping? Could we see a shortage of hospital beds and PPE like we did in the spring, for example, in places like Wisconsin? I know that our correspondent Adriana Diaz has been reporting from there um, and the doctors that she's speaking to are are worried and and i do note that there was one interesting beat in her story um, that some of the medical professionals that she's spoken to in hospitals say they actually feel safer in the hospital working than they do outside of the hospital because of the way mask wearing and social distancing has been politicized yeah, and I'm really worried about what this will lead to. I mean, even in New Jersey, where I am, the hospitals are seeing, uh, you know, this, the ICUs are getting full. And there's uh, numbers creeping up into double digits, which we didn't see for a very long time. So now we see these surges in the Midwest. And indeed, I have been hearing the same thing, that uh, the hospital beds, you know, and a lot of these are not urban areas with many tertiary care centers. So you can see how easily their ICU capacity can fill up. Uh, it also also remains to be seen whether there's adequate PPE. I doubt that uh, PPE in those states is being used as it's supposed to, where you go into a room where you wear your PPE, your N95 mask, and you throw it away. Um, it could be that people are still reusing one mask uh, for the week or something like that, because again, that was not a place where we saw a lot of scale up, which should have happened um, by the government, frankly. And I think there is this lingering and continuing through, sadly, as we enter winter pandemic fatigue. And as it gets cooler, it's going to be harder uh, to control people not doing the same thing and now indoors, which we know is the riskiest environment, especially if there's poor ventilation and no masks being used. So the, the lack of masks and the way that that continues to be disregarded is alarming. And it's likely leading to a lot of these spikes, uh, along with socializing, uh, young people socializing, and then uh, bringing home infections to people who are more high risk uh, in their home environment are at play here. Dr. Nita Ogden, as always, we so appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.